reminder for that. I, I see that, well, well, we'll see how it goes. And also a reminder too, this is a non-action meeting, but I'm gonna call it a thought-provoking meeting. So we'll, we'll try and have a little fun that way. We are streaming, Donnie. We are streaming as well. All right. Well, once again, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you to our committee members for attending. Welcome to our public out there. This is the NIAA Realignment Committee Workshop. And again, this is a non-action taking meeting, but as I have informed to our committee members, this is a thought provoking meeting. So for all of you who wanna listen in, this is an overview. This is not the first official meeting of the realignment process. Again, in the workshop, we've got some questions to consider today, some things to go through. And in essence, we're getting ourselves ready for what will be the first action meeting of this committee. I'm Donnie Nelson, the interim executive director for the NIA. I'm gonna serve as the, the meeting's liaison in essence for today. We have a, a chair and a vice chair that we bouncing in and out of the meeting today. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. It is 1.01 to get us started on our, for our minutes. And with that said, I'm gonna to go to a roll call. Here we go. Uh, uh, chair, Rollin Stallworth, are you here? Okay. Uh, vice Chair, Pamela Sloan. Here. Thank you. Voting members. And again, though the chair and the vice chair are non-voting committee members. This is the list of voting members now. David Vick for the 1A North. Here. Excuse me for one second. Let me go ahead and just so everybody can see. Get through that here so who the committee members are. There we go. All right. Uh, Mike Strong, representing the 1A South. No, Mike Strong, yeah, okay. Mike Brooks, representing the 2A North. Here. Thank you, Mike. Bill Darrow, representing the 2A South. Bill Darrow yet. Billy is here, Donnie. Billy's he here. Is. I don't think he just hasn't connected to audio yet. Okay, I'll check him in. Thank you. Uh, Ray Parks, representing the 3A North. Here, it looks like whatever the North wants, we get today. <laughs> Non-action meeting, right? Thank you. All right, all right. <laughs> J. Dale Wilson, representing 3A South. Uh, here to counter Ray's vote. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ron Gearson, representing the 4A, 5A South. Here. Thank you, Ron. Kevin McPartland, representing the 4A, 5A South. Here. Thank you, Kevin. Art Anderson, representing the 5A North. Here. Thank you, Art. And our non-voting -vote, uh, voting consultants. Brett Walter, representing the private schools. Here. Thank you, Brett. And Mike Kofer, representing the charter schools. No mic yet? Okay. Tim Jackson, representing the Clark County School District. And I know Tim's going to be bouncing in and out. I'm going to check him in because I know he's already verified with me. He would be here, so I'm going to check him in. Uh, Non-voting advisors, again, Donnie Nelson here from the NIA. Bart Davis from the NIA. Here. Thank you, sir. Bart Thompson from the NIAA. No Bart Thompson yet? Okay. Bart Davis, will you send him a quick text and see if he's, he, we'll he may that. be out fishing still. I will do that. <laughs> and I mean that with all love. <laughs> Paul Anderson from the NIA. Here. Thank you. And these people not to be, uh, on the roster, so to speak, but just uh, NIA staff members, all from attendance, I want to recognize Jay Beesmeyer, Lori Lotz, and Bob Northridge. So I take care of our roll call. If we do have Rollins jump back in, uh, Mike Strong jump back in, Mike Kofer get in. Uh, if one of our staff members would notice them, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. All right, next up, let's go to our approval of our September 13th. That's today, 2021 meeting agenda. Do I have a motion for approval of the agenda, please? Ray Parks would like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Parks. And do I have a second? Yeah, a second. A second. All right, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Got that. All right, and is there any... Again, as the motion, we will be able to keep this in agenda order, which would be kind of nice. But any other 
comments to our agenda? Hearing none, call for the question. All those in favor, please give Aye. us a hand. Thank you. Anybody opposed? All right, our agenda will move on at 105. Thank you. We'll go to public comments at this time. I'll read our disclaimer for our public comment. This time provides an opportunity for citizens to address the committee about any matter not on the agenda. Items raised during this portion of the agenda cannot be deliberated or acted upon until compliance with notice procedures of the open meeting law have been accomplished. Members of the public who wish to speak on a matter not listed on the agenda were instructed to contact Lori Lotz prior to the meeting to obtain the procedure for providing live uh, public comment. Additionally, members of the public who have submitted public comment by email will have their email read into the record. Limit of three minutes per person and or five minutes for the spokesperson or group may be imposed. It is requested that comments be directed to the committee as a whole. Comments that are determined to be irrelevant, repetitious, offensive, inflammatory, willfully disruptive, or deemed to be personal attacks will not be permitted. The time limits and restrictions just described will apply to email comments being read into the record as well as live comments. Lori, uh, let me, let's go first if we have any email comments. Have you received anything in our office? No, no email comments. Okay, thank you, thank you, Lori. We do have a live public comment from Tom Reimer, Athletic Director at Incline High School. Mr. Reimer, are you on there with us? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, Mr. Reimer, thank you for joining us today. The floor is yours for three minutes. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, NIAA and uh, Realignment Committee. A couple years ago when we met, there was a forecast for uh, two teams in the South to compete with soccer, and that didn't get off the ground. Um, obviously, we had the COVID year last year, and this year we've lost two boys programs and possibly a third boys program in the 2A1A. So we'd like you to reconsider realigning soccer to meet the NIAA guidelines of nine teams for a state tournament. Um, we'd be more than willing to help you guys in the future as far as trying to plan out how this would look, possibly by geography or whatever, but we'd like to see it back to where we have at least nine teams for a state playoff as we're not going to have that this year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reimer. Appreciate your comments. All right. We will, I don't believe there are any other public comments, Lori. Anybody has asked to log in? No, that was it. Okay. Th thank you, Lori. All right, we'll go to item E, executive, uh, interim executive director's comments. Uh, again, wanna thank, thank our committee members for your service to this realignment process. Uh, there is no doubt we will have some unknown challenges ahead when we try and figure out what's best for the association uh, on the greater good side for, for the membership. I wanna say, I, I believe our previous committee, which included many of you, actively engaged our association stakeholders. Uh, I believe our previous committee reached out as well as possible to our membership and all those other groups that had a vested interest in the, in the process. And I have no doubt that this, this committee will be similarly uh, proficient. We're gonna begin looking at this new cycle officially in late November, early December. Again, I'll propose a first official meeting date coming up here later in our agenda. And oddly enough, that will be after having completed just one season, right? This fall season in the current realignment cycle. So that in itself will create some deliberations. Uh, you know, how, how are we gonna analyze evaluate and potentially revise the policies and procedures of a process from which we have yet derived any you know, comprehensive data, that will be difficult to do. Uh, how do we consider amending or overhauling something that's still new to us? Again, this is a brand new cycle and format of the way we're doing things based on the previous approvals. And how do we value what we've learned from the previous cycle when we really don't have that amount of data yet? We're, we're still figuring this out. So a lot of, a lot of unknowns, and that's why we're having this meeting to get you to think about things as we propose some questions for you. Uh, Bart Davis and Bart Thompson, if he does join on here, have, have generated some key questions. You'll see that a little bit later in the, in the realignment uh, agenda. And again, as a reminder, this is, this is not an action-taking meeting. This is only a guidance directing meeting. So we're here today to try and better forecast what's in front of us and how we should take uh, on potential conflicts. So I was gonna turn over to Bart Thompson. Uh, Lori, have you seen Bart join into the meeting yet? No. Okay. So we'll, we'll skip, we'll skip, uh, we'll, we'll table basically item F for this point. I, I really wanted Bart Thompson to kind of give us from past executive director's comments some, to review some of the action and deliberations of what, what he saw. I almost want to ask him if he in hindsight could say a few things about the process and the way it went. So I'm going to hold on to that just in case he, he joins us. And with that said, then I'm going to go to item G 
we'll hold off on F. Let's go to item G and talk about the, the review of our NI realignment uh, committee's membership. So, you know, personally speaking, I, I believe that the committee operates most efficiently and effectively when it properly represents that for which it serves. And we, we all know that a committee too big creates a potential of getting mired in minutia. Uh, I heard that word recently. That made sense to me. And also, we also know at, the, at a point when a committee is too small, then we have the potential of groups being underrepresented. And let me kind of get to where I'm going at here next with what we're talking about. And this is going to be on page page two of your packet. Hey, Donnie. Gonna, yes, Lori. I just wanted to let you know that um, Mike Strong has just joined us, as Thank well you. as Bobby Northridge. Excellent. Thank you. Let me note that down here real quick, and we'll continue on with our thoughts. Mike, thank you for joining us today. Bobby, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Johanny. I tried yeah. getting on. We're all good. So just for everybody's information here, what's on page two, this is something I'm going to propose to our NIA Board of Control during its next meeting. That's coming up September 21st, 22nd. And it is, in essence, a revision to this committee from what was previously approved by the board. This amendment, I, I believe, best represents the number of schools in the class 1A and the classes 4A, 5A southern regions, while key is still keeping the integrity of the committee together. So again, this is not an action item. Uh, but I wanted to show you this, and I'd be more than willing to take some feedback, some comments on this. So let me explain what we have here. You see currently about the ratio uh, with, with the number of representatives compared to the number of schools, and I use this as teams. I, I broke it down using boys basketball as an example. And you see what the ratio is there for the 1A, and you see what the ratio is there for the 4A and 5A southern regions compared to everybody else. And so what I'd like to, what I'm going to propose to the board is that in the 1A, we add another person, uh, another voting member, and also for the 4A, 5A South as a collective group to add another member. And then you see what the ratio does there for each of those if, if that committee member is added and it brings it back into line with really where the 2A, 3A, and 5A North would be. And with that said, I've done a lot of thought process on this. And the, the people that I have come into, uh, what, I, what I'm going to recommend is particularly is Ken Higby from Wells. He's the, he's the uh, principal there. He's the East League president. Uh, he fits very well with the two other representatives from the North and South being David Vick and uh, Mike Strong. And Ken's also got a lot of link to the Central as both David and uh, Mike do as well. So he, he's going to be my choice. Again, I'll, I'll open up here for some questions and comments in just a minute. 4A, 5A South edition, I would uh, determine that to be Tim Jackson from the CCSD office, considering his role and what he does across the board for all of our, well, 3A as well, but this is a 4A, 5A Southern position. And being the massing scheduler, he has a lot of input in understanding legal alignments and uh, the reasons that we have what we have in rubric place. And if we were to put uh, Tim Jackson in that place right now, he is a consultant non-voting. I would not continue that position for the Clark County School District. I would simply, we'd have two, two consultants in non-voting position from the uh, private schools and the public schools. We would not bring another CCSD person in. We'd simply move Tim from a non-voting to a voting. So in essence, we would be adding two voting members, which, which keeps us still at an odd number, but we're only adding, in essence, one person to the realignment committee. So you think about travel and budgets and what have you. And I think this would be a, a fair a fair across the board, still balancing, again, the integrity between North and South. We have to even get into that, uh, but, it, but it represents the number of schools, I believe, in the 1A, 4A, 5A South, uh, effectively. So with that said, let me, I, I don't know if people want to put a hand up. I know you don't want to talk over each other. Let me kind of go to, let, let, let me open it up to uh, Mike Strong and David Vick first. Mike, Mike, David, tell me how you feel about this for, the, for your 1A edition, if I, if I pose that to the board here uh, another week. I, I think it's a good thing for the 1A because um, Ken brings a lot from the, from the South and the Central and the East, so it just gives us a more rounded approach to things. Mike Strong? Yeah, yeah, I have to agree with, uh, with Dave there. Um, right now, as our situation is with the four different divisions, the East is kind of kind of the one left out, essentially. Um, and so this would really help in that area of what their needs are and um, what they'd like to see as we go forward as well. And, you know, there's not a more involved person in, in that, that division right now than, than Ken would be. And plus the, the vast history would definitely help us out as well. So thanks. Thank you, Mike. 
let's transition to the 4A, 5A South. And let's, uh, Ron and then Kevin. Ron, why don't you go first? Kevin, why don't you go second? Uh, tell me what you two think about 4A, 5A South, third voting member. Thank you, Donnie. This is Ron. Um, I'd love to consider evening, evening out the ratios um, as you've suggested here. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Yeah, uh, Kevin McPartland for the record. So um, for me, I think it's I, it's very appropriate to add a representative for 4A, 5A. For me, I'd, I'd like to kind of take it back to the principals just to see their thoughts on not having another principal, but having it be Mr. Jackson. Um, just I don't have any feedback on that of what that thought process might be, but I think that adding the position is very appropriate. Okay, sounds good. Um, Pam Sloan, are you still on there, Vice Chair? All right, and, and I don't believe, uh, we, we obviously we haven't invited. Hey, Pam's here, Donnie, Pam is here. Donnie, oh, Pam. Donnie, I am here. Sorry, I'm bouncing between meetings here. Yeah, I understand. Um, I told people you would be bouncing around. So yeah, go ahead if you have comments on this. Yeah, just, just really quick. I am in full support that Tim is, is placed in this position primarily because of his involvement and in, in what he does for the league. He, you know, and he's worked so hard with this realignment. He understands the realignment and, uh, and the represent, uh, representation will balance out throughout the state. So, so again, I think he brings a lot to the table. I think he should have a, have a, have a seat um, with, with the voting members. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else, two AYs, three AYs that would like to comment to this before we, we move forward? And I'll tell you what then, what the plan is with this again. Just wondering if we got to get Tim a bunch of his little middle lunch boxes for him to participate. <laughs> no? All right. Very good. All right. Anybody else? Two A. Three. A? I'm good. Okay. So once again, this will be an agenda item to amend our committee on our board of control, and it'll be our voting members, obviously, at the board that will approve this, amend this, send this back, whatever it takes. At this point, again, this is this is not action. Just uh, as the interim executive director, I do uh, have have authority to at least be able to present this, and I, I feel like this is in the best interest of the committee and of our membership overall to be able. To that said, let's uh, let's check off G and uh, let's let's move on and we're going to go to uh, to item H and we'll talk about the timeline of what we're going to consider moving forward here. So hopefully everybody has this in, the, in their packets. This this item goes pages three through seven. And again, there you see just the timeline. That's the committee that's in place right now. We may or may not amend that after our board control meeting. And I want to make sure everybody feels comfortable with this. I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick review here. You can, you've all got your packets. You've been able to see this. We'll start off right at the bat. Our, our first official meeting is going to be late November, early December. I'm going to propose to you, and I want you to think about this here, uh, that our first meeting, which you see what the agenda topics are there for late November, again, early December meeting, that uh, we look at Tuesday, Tuesday, November 30th. Uh, my reasoning behind that is I want us all to get free and clear of fall sports, get all the way through the championships, which ends uh, with, with state football in that uh, third week in November. And then I also obviously want to get clear of Thanksgiving. Now, coming back on Monday, the 29th, for those of you that are in the school building, which are pretty much all of you, uh, in, in this, unless you're in district office, that day will be wild and crazy for you. So that doesn't make sense. But uh, Tuesday, the 30th, to still get this done in time to put the minutes together and get ready for some approvals in our board of control meeting. I, I think this is probably a, a best time frame to shoot for Tuesday, November 30th. And, and I'm really looking at probably about a three and a half hour meeting. I, I'm just guessing, you know, you never know. That's I, hopefully it's on the long side of things. Anyway, just kind of, kind of person by person. If you want to throw something to chat, that's fine. I can, I can see those pop up, but uh, think about that. How, how does Tuesday, November 30th, 9 a.m. work for everybody with the idea that we can get, get you in the buildings first, taking care of the morning duties, and hopefully get you out of there in time for lunchtime and certainly for the afternoon issues that happen with the, within your within your buildings. How does that sound for everybody? And again, this isn't an action item. It's just it guides me for when I can start setting this up. And, and Mr. Nelson, just to jump in on this, if I could really quick, sure. by, by saying what you're saying, this would be a virtual meeting, not an in-person meeting is what we would tentatively plan on. Yeah, thank, thank you, Bart, for uh, adding that. Uh, again, I, I do plan on this first meeting and just this first meeting being virtual. I, I think because again, coming after the, the fall sports season, uh, coming after the Thanksgiving holiday weekend and still trying to get this in before the board meeting, my, my plan is for this one to be virtual. 
because I think there are a lot of things we can accomplish in this format that, that we need to do. But obviously after this, we, we're going to have a lot of in-person meetings. We have to. Uh, I can tell you for our September 21st, 22nd board meeting, we're going to be virtual. I hope we don't have to do that anymore as we move into December. I really hope that that's going to be in person. We need it to be in person. We've got a lot of things to solve. And to be honest with you, as we all know, being face-to-face is a whole lot easier. But at the same time, we understand the health, safety, and welfare concerns of people to to get to that point where we can be in person. So again, any, any other, anybody want to put anything in chat with regards to the date? Give me a thumbs up. Okay. Not okay. doesn't work. I know you're all scrambling to try and check your calendars here real quick. So again, I'm looking at Tuesday. The other options would be certainly again, Monday, November 29th, right, right when you're back or Wednesday, December 1st. So it's a three day time period. Now. Any, any thoughts to anybody on that? Donnie, were you leaning towards the morning time? For the I am Ron. Yeah. Looking at 9.00 AM. So I want to give you a chance to get your, get your school day started. But at the same time, I know once you hit the lunch break, if we do really go three hours, you, you've got a lot of stuff to handle in the afternoon. Uh, I'm afraid if we started at one o'clock, you, a lot of a lot of people here would be dealing with uh, winter sports duties, and you know if we ran into four o'clock, they need to be out at the athletic facilities. I realize that as well, and being able to talk to their administrators, athletic directors, and coaches. So I, I want to get it done. I, I realize interrupting the school days may not necessarily be any better than interrupting the athletic component of the afternoon, but uh, I'm hoping for the greater good. This is this is probably the best choice. So nine nine a.m. start time on Tuesday the third virtual virtually again virtually as well okay we're okay with that everybody all right thank you all right we'll, we'll lean towards that all right with that said let's go to item i and this is when we start having our thought provoking discussion here let me let me go and so again you, you have this proposed timeline in front of you as you look at this the rest of the the dates that are proposed, sorry, I don't want to jump too quickly past that. You can see when we're planning on doing things, right? We start getting into a lot of heavy stuff, not, not too far away. The spring board control meeting, uh, summer and fall, when we start getting into uh, schools that are going to peel based on an um, anticipated placement. So, I, I, again, I don't, I don't want to take that much time with you because we'll, we'll do all this when we get into our first official meeting. That's when we'll approve this. So, but this, this is what I'm thinking of. So as we get towards uh, that November 29th meeting, be thinking about this timeline and see how it works, works for all of you, okay? In your respective league schools, region schools. All right, let's go to page eight. Uh, I'm gonna turn this over to my trusty coordinator of sports, Bart Davis. He's gonna give us a little background here. We're gonna, we're gonna throw these bullet points at you. And then behind that, as you know, in your agenda, and I'll, I'll go through them one by one, I'll switch those pages. These are some things we got to start thinking about as we get to November. So with that said, Mr. Davis, thank you uh, for all your preliminary work on this. And again, getting people to understand some things that we're going to need to attack, really. So you know, that, I mean that in a good way in an attack. So Mr. Davis, all yours. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Good afternoon, everybody. Just so that everybody's aware as we go through what are those seven bullet points up in front of you, we're not looking to rehaul everything that we've done. Um, we haven't had a chance to see yet what this rubric, what this alignment can really do and how it's going to look. Um, when I've talked this over with staff, what I compare this to is, is we're taking the car into the shop just to get it looked at, make sure everything's running okay. We found some little things that maybe, maybe you've heard a little rattle someplace and you just want to make sure you're good with it. We're not going to go buy a new car. That's not what we're all about right now. We just see some things that could be maybe potential hangups to not get us to the competitive balance that we're looking for. So these are some things for you to think about, to go back to the people whom you represent, talk with them, and maybe get a feel for which direction we want to go on certain things. Again, if you have thoughts right now or questions right now, we'll certainly entertain those. We're not here to make any decisions, as Mr. Nelson said. And what we say may be something that you look at and think, no, nope, don't want to touch it. And that's fine. But we do need to kind of address these just to see where we're going. So that first item is the time frame, And this one is something that we're going to need to give some thought to. Our last realignment, we were using four years of data and the discussion came up that we wanted to use four because when we started looking at those bubble teams, as we got down to certain breaks for where to align 5A teams or where to drop that 4A, 3A line, there were teams on the bubble and we wanted to consider trends. Well, if we look at four years of data now, running it back from the 22-23 season, which is when this would end, 
That takes us back to start in 2019, 2020, where we didn't have a spring season. It ended on March 14th were the last games. The 2021 season, we all remember what happened there. Some people did get to play some sports, but we had nothing that looked like a real season. Obviously, we'd have 21-22, which is this year, and 22-23. So because we're looking at a couple of seasons that really aren't completely usable, what we're thinking about is maybe going to two years of data. We still have older data, and we can still compute what we had of 2019-20 and 2021 to look at if we need to look at trends. But using two years will keep us in alignment every time we realign. Everybody's going to have those same sets of numbers for where they competed. It might be a little more true number. And we're looking at the most recent two years as opposed to waiting year three and year four equally to year one and year two. I think it will make things easier for us in the long run. I think it's a more true number when you look at those two years. But if we need to stick with four or find some sort of compromise, maybe even waiting years, that's something that, that we can do. We've talked about that as a staff. And Mr. Nelson, I'll, I'll invite you to jump back in here at any time if you'd like. Mr. Thompson was going to kind of help through this, but apparently he's being kept away today. So, again, this is probably the first thing we need to discuss is, is how long we want to go with, with the, the set of data. Mr. Nelson, any thoughts? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Davis. No, you uh, stated everything eloquently. I appreciate that. I think that was the, the, the proper summary for this time. Again, not, not an action item. These are things that we want you to think about. Uh, you probably need to go back to representatives of your various schools within your league and region, ask them what they think about. When we get back to that uh, November 29th meeting, we, we need some input from all of you, what we're going to do. And this is a really big question. Two years of data, four years of data. How do we draw it? So right. uh, I'm going to leave it there. Let, let me go ahead and open up to the floor. Yeah, I want to hear some, just some yeah. comments. Okay, Donnie, Ray Parks. All right. All right. So I don't need any data. I can tell you that right now. So what's happening up here in the north, um, as you know, it's all demographics and it's time and it's travel. So it's not working. It's, it's, and it's not going to work because now, um, you know, it's five hours from Spring Creek to South Lake Tahoe. So we need to go back to demographics up here because I literally get a call daily and it's happened for the last two years and it's not going to change where they can't provide transportation they can't pay for transportation so i mean we got to get back to reality here the competitive balance and all that i appreciate that but it's out the window in northern nevada when you're spending five hours on a bus for one single soccer game at douglas high school or douglas is spending five hours on a bus for one single boys soccer game at Spring Creek High School. So what's happening, and you know this, Donnie, we've had this discussion, they're just canceling. They're canceling either because of COVID, they're canceling because of smoke, they're canceling because they're claiming eligibility, they're canceling because of transportation, and it's just reality. There's, I get it. There's no bus drivers in Winnemucca, there's no bus drivers in Elko, there's no bus drivers in Lyon County and Washoe County, all those kind of things. So I got 12 schools in here four of which are in Reno that were having a hard time ever coming anywhere. And two of which are in California and they, they can't travel either. So we can talk all this we want, but me talking to these different superintendents, there's no money and there's not going to be more money. And there's not going to be more bus drivers to fix this. So just, I mean, that's reality. No, thank, thank you, Ray, for your comments. Hey, Jay Dell from the three South side of things. What, uh, what do you feel like? Why rubric wise, what's your, what's your initial comment? Again, I, I know we don't have any data to really see where in the heck we are, but uh, what, here, hearing Ray's comments, what would be your comments, J. Dell? You know, travel wise for us, obviously it's not as bad. Us to Prump is probably the the worst um, worst trip. I know the, the question for us that comes up mostly on on this realignment is the addition of these charter schools that, that are minimal um, at best. Um, I mean, we added Cadence and, and they're, you know, played in WAPAS JV and, and lost in WAPAS JV, so they're not real competitive. So I know as far as the 3A goes and the guys that I've talked to, that's the that's a question of concern for us is um, bringing all these charter schools in um, and obviously the travel. I mean, COVID has, has caused all kinds of messes for us as well with travel. Thank, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Ron? Ron and then Kevin, let's go, let's go again from the principal side of things and 
You heard what Jay Dell's comments were from the 3A South, thinking about 4A, 5A combination. That's where the most um, influence, right, of the rubric takes place. So obviously, we do have some schools that they still go to the 3A, but the 4A, 5A is where it really is the, is the crux of everything. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you gentlemen think? Donnie, with the limited amount of information we have with this new system, um, I, I do believe that the current system will serve uh, to promote a competitive balance. So, so I like it so far. Uh, we don't have necessarily the challenges of travel like, like uh, perhaps other areas of the state does. But for now, I'm not sure we have enough data to speak one way or the other, but with the limited amount of information and experience we've had so far, uh, I like it. Thank you, sir. Kevin? Yeah, no, I definitely agree with Ron. I think with the, the limited you know, data we have, but competitive balance is much improved. I think having specific sports even being at different levels based on, you know, like at Arborview, well, football 5A, but boys soccer. You know, so I think it's it's it appears to be working with the data we have. Um, and But certainly I'm sympathetic to the travel concerns that we don't necessarily have here in the Valley. But um, so I agree with Mr. Gerzon. Yeah, thank you. And, and as we know, this will be something the committee can certainly debate about how far do we extend the use of the rubric, right? We started out with, with it being primarily a Southern based system. And then we brought in the North 5A, 3A North into it uh, as discussions went further from the past. So there's there's a lot of different ways we can look at it. I'm gonna ask a fun question here to, to Bill or Mike with the 2A and uh, Mike or David with the 1A. Is there any interest in the 1A, 2A to have a rubric system? Um, we've not, we don't have any interest in the rubric right now. We're a little spoiled with the number of schools we got. Probably our issue is going to be to, to, is to determine really if we can still constitute four divisions or does three going to be more appropriate. Due to a little what Ray's talking about, um, you know, the east has been the east. It's fine, but it's a central and central south issue or west central issue. And, you know, with some of those schools a long ways away and, and we're in the same boat as everybody else is COVID still still quite an issue of uh, trying to get games played, but that has, doesn't have anything to do with do with what we're doing here. Um, so that's, that's kind of, kind of for us, but um, yeah, I, I've not seen any, any interest in, in a rubric. Okay. Let me go to uh, D David, Vic, I'm assuming the same, same sentiments. Echoed yeah, right I, I agree with what Mike's saying. Uh, okay. uh, Mike, Mike Brooks, Bill Darrow, two way, same sentiments, I'm guessing. Yeah. No rubric. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let me, um, let me let me jump over to Art Anderson, 5A North. Hey Art, you're w welcome to the committee and thank you. You know, he hearing Appreciate a little it. bit of this, hearing what Ray Parks just said from the, the 3A. Um, I know again, the 5A North hasn't discussed this at some point. Uh, Bob Levy, your commissioner, put this on the agenda about rubric and movement. Um, I I any just preliminary thoughts uh, about this? Uh, no, I, I'm, I completely understand what Ray is saying and how difficult, I mean, especially this season uh, with the, all the smoke and uh, the COVID issues like everybody else. Um, but um, right now, I mean, unless we would break up into smaller groups of uh, 3A, 4A, and possibly develop a 4A and then a 5A, but I, I know there's that you want the 9 to 1 ratio um, being the smallest group. So that probably wouldn't work unless we change that ratio. Um, but that's just something to think about. Yeah, hey, thank, Donnie, thank you. I'm not, I'm, Donnie, I'm not saying to get rid of your rubric down south by any means. I think it works great down there. I understand the whole thing and how it works. But yeah, I mean, we've talked up here about, you know, get, make it a 4A, 5A. And so those guys all play each other until it's time for the playoffs. And then a group goes down to the 4A. You know, so I have Wooster, Hug, um, North Valleys, and work with me here, Sparks, right now in town. Um, you know, I at this point, I'd be more than fine with them going into a foray. I think they would be, too. They don't want to travel out here. You know, I thought things were different when we, when we preached and we had everybody wanting to get 12 schools so that we'd be the same as a 3A. But now it's excuse after excuse after excuse. And you know me, I'm blunt and I'm honest. This is what's happening to us. And I'm tired of it, to tell you the truth. And it's happened for the last two years. Yeah, thank you, Ray. So you can see we generated a whole lot of discussion off topic of time frame. 
that's that that's how intense it's going to be when we get into the nitty gritty of everything. So, uh, Bart Davis, let me turn it back to you. Talk about yeah, Donnie, that. just real quick. It, yeah, is that even an option? Like what Ray's talking about? Would that take the NIAA board to approve um, lowering our ratios so that we created a 4A and then maybe did something like Ray said with um, deciding certain teams went to one uh, playoff um, for a state competition? Just doing something simply because we don't have as many schools, obviously, as the South does, possibly looking at doing something different for the North and creating um, in order to fill that 4A um, void, I guess. Yeah, Art, as you will get the privilege of learning and we'll have the honor of having you serve on this committee, all of that will be up for discussion with this committee. Ah, got it, right there. Just yeah. have to read. There you Just go. have to read. The whole okay. process. Okay. Yeah, you, you go through. So, it's like you look at that timeline, and that's why it was, a, it was a lead item for Bart and I. Look at the timeline of how we're going to do things and what this committee will recommend to the board, what the board may send back. Uh, what we get out to our schools and we do our surveys and then ultimately prove things. And that includes ultimately going into tournament formats. This, this realignment committee will also, as I've structured it right now, also going to be our tournament format committee. So anyway, a lot of things to talk about. Bart Davis, back to you. We've got two more items here. Let's keep on rolling. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Nelson. Just to kind of circle back on that, Mr. Anderson's question. Yeah, the committee can has the freedom to, to do what it wants to. But yes, this will need board approval eventually also. Whatever the committee does propose would go before the, the board of control to be agreed with. The other last point I'll make on the timeline, too, is for those who were on this committee the last time around, you'll remember the most contentious discussion we had on where to place a team was with Clark's boys basketball team. And... We moved them to 4A, moved them to 5A, moved them to 4A. They eventually went back to 5A based on our board, which basically went against the realignment committee's recommendation in that case. When we looked at four years of data, Clark was number two. When we looked at two years of data, Clark was number eight, and it was a little bit easier of a sell at that point to try to move them. So those are some things to consider when we look at a timeline. Uh, moving on to the next thing, these two items are a little bit tied to each other and maybe not tied to each other based on what that discussion that just brought up was. The first thing we look at, and Mr. Wilson touched on this just a little bit with some of those schools that are coming into the 3A, our charter schools, we're running into really the possibility of only having enrollment-based 3A schools in the 3A and having a very wide gap between their ability levels when we include the charter schools with our traditional 3A schools. Not recommending one way or the other on this, but simply something to think about. Do we have the possibility of those 3A schools be included maybe as a move to 4A at times if their rubric points validate that move? It would theoretically give them more competitive games. If we look at a 4A now, and this is just kind of on papers, again, we don't have the data, but you can make some arguments in certain sports that the top portion of the 3A in the South might be stronger than the top portion of the 4A in the South. And do we try to make a little bit better of an adjustment to try to get more teams that are equally competitive together in both ends of the groups? Plus, that may also help for some of those schools that have lower level teams and some that don't to be able to match them up a little bit better. That, again, not going to recommend one way or another on that. Just something to think about. But if we were to do that, we would cap the movement on those 3A schools most likely to not force them into 5A against maybe the better teams. They can certainly uh, certainly appeal to go up to 5A. We had that with Slam Wrestling this last time around. We had that uh, Chaparral move from 3A to 4A, which was their movement that they could make in one cycle and appealed up to 5A in boys soccer. So just some possibilities there. I think probably the first person that we would need to go to on this, Mr. Nelson, is Mr. Wilson to get his thoughts on this as we open up the discussion. Yeah, yeah, thank you. JD, that's exactly right because I'm going to think of uh, one, one particular school just outside the Valley that is highly successful in a, in a variety of sports. They're enrollment protected right now. That's, that's what our committee put together. That's what our handbook says, and that's what our vote, board voted on. But obviously this would open up the possibility of of that school moving somewhere else. And Ray Parks can probably think of a few particular programs in the 3A North that also have a long history of success going, yeah, they wouldn't be in the 3A North anymore. So, J. Dell, go ahead. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'd be an interesting conversation. I know, for example, volleyball right now uh, in the South or in our 3A 
with the number of teams we have, you know, we're at 16 games, so it only allows for two tournaments um, with the additional two games. And I know some of the schools are requesting a third tournament, so maybe allowing them to go to 4A would would reduce the number of league games for them and, and allow for that. Uh, but honestly, without talking to them, uh, with, you know, talking to uh, Boulder and Moapa, um, I know Prump is right on that cusp of where you're going to talk on the next part about the 3A enrollment wise. Um, talking to Jason, they're about 1347 or so right now in, in Prump number wise. Um, so I don't know. It would, it, it definitely does cause some issues when you talk about the ability levels and, and competitive balance in, in some of those sports. So without, like I say, without talking to those other schools, I'm not sure. And that's uh, honestly, Mr. Wilson, just piggybacking that comment, that's kind of what we're here for is just so that you can take this information and give it to your, your member schools that you represent, have a conversation with them before we get into that November meeting so that maybe we have a better idea of, of where everybody stands on this. Mr. Parks, if you'd like to, to add something. Yeah, so food for thought, Elko will be at three thirteen fifty. Fernley will probably be bigger, but the Northern 3A wants to keep them. They want to stay. I've talked to their, you know, Elko's got a mess with the superintendent, but I've talked to their principal. Um, I've talked to the uh, principal and the assistant in charge of athletics at Fernley. They'd like to stay. But their questions are, you know, so Fernley High School, for those of you in the south, is only 29 miles from Reno. So they got, you know, there's lots of schools there. Um, yet there are you know, a couple hundred miles from Elko and Spring Creek. So although the principals want to stay in our league, they're not sure that their superintendent wants to for the fact of the cost, you know, driving out there because they usually field all teams in every sport. Whereas a Sparks doesn't field all teams, a Hug doesn't field all teams, Woosters doesn't field all teams, and North Valleys, even though they're 2,500 kids or more, they're not fielding all their teams either. So our traditional... Small town, you know, the Fallon, Lowry, which is Winnemucca, Elko, Spring Creek, Burnley, and Dayton, you know, are all filled in teams. Dayton struggles to, to get their football going, but they have one this year. Whereas those city schools aren't fil filled in hardly anything. And then Tahoe Truckee in California and South Lake Tahoe in California, they're also in our league. They're filled in them, but they have troubles traveling they're 300 miles, uh, some of them, out to Spring Creek each way. So you can see what it's doing. And then with the lack of officials and so on, you, they just can't handle all this stuff. And, and to have like a weekday game is virtually impossible. I still send our guys on a Tuesday because we're right smack dab in the middle of everything. But they get home at you know midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. So um, I know we have six solid schools in the east that would love to stay. I think some in Reno would, would love to stay, but I don't think they're financially are going to be allowed to. So I think we can, we can talk in circles, but eventually the superintendents are going to come in and tell us, hey, here's, here's the bottom line. We don't have the money. We don't have the, the buses. We don't have the bus drivers. We got to stay in the city. And, and we realize that. So, you know, I, I'd say we're going to have six solid ones for sure moving forward. And then Tahoe, Truckee, and South Lake Tahoe are going to have to decide what they're doing. But, you know, I don't want to waste everybody's time on these rubrics and all this competitive balance because eventually these the money's going to come in there. It's going to tell us to stop. And, and Ray, thank you. And the one thing, though, that I, I do want your opinion on, on some of this stuff is it is going to affect the 3A in terms of maybe who you end up playing or who you end up competing against in state events, for well, instance. I, I that, get is, that. Yeah, I and I know that. you do. Is, yeah. is that going to be an issue if, you know, more of the larger enrollment schools maybe were to be in the 3A? Well, I'm sure it'll be all kinds of issues, but reality is I can't fix that for those guys. You know, you don't want me to get Elko rolling on the Clark fiasco when they had the best team in the state for, you know, four years in a row and they go down and get the hell beat out by Clark or, or uh, who was the other one? Desert uh, Pine. Desert, Desert Pine. Pine. So, I mean, I don't need those guys all cranked up on me again, as you know. Right. Um, but, you know, reality is, and they're in the same boat. They can't travel either. So half the time Elko will call and say they can't find a bus to Reno. So they don't, I can't see them, you know, that the fans are going to complain, but the school officials, they can't, they can't use that when they can't travel to Reno either. So. And, and, 
Yeah. And theoretically, as we look at this, and just so the group knows, we were in a situation with Clark and Desert Pines at that point where, and the placement was determined by all programs as opposed to the sport by sport alignment that we're in yeah. now, which hopefully makes things better. Uh, we haven't had a chance to find out yeah. yet, but <laughs> as we, as we talk about this, uh, Ron, Kevin, as the representatives from the South, where some of your teams are in 4A now, and, and you're playing against some of these other schools. If we, if we looked at that, maybe as a Boulder City, Moapa Valley, Virgin Valley, Pahrump Valley, some of the charters also being eligible for movement into 4A and maybe some other teams who are struggling to compete at the 4A level would go to 3A. Is that something, uh, not to lead you in any way, your thoughts on, on, on that either Ron or Kevin? Thank you, Bart. I think the idea would be attractive to many principals and it would serve uh, to achieve the competitive balance, but I think it won't necessarily take away the, uh, the, the travel problems that uh, many of the schools are experiencing right now. Thank you, Ron. Kevin? Yeah, no, just the exact same thing. I mean, I just think that, you know, the, the competitive balance is, is a huge issue in the Valley and those schools that, you know, that are on the outside, they certainly are a part of it when they can compete. And, uh, um, but it, the travel is going to have to, and the, and the money, like, like with, mm -hmm. you know, Park said is, is going to be an issue. So, no, we're, I'm good. Yeah, and, and thank you. And I think the thing that we need to remember on this too is what we do for the South, we don't have to do for the North and vice versa on this. So as Donnie mentioned, originally this was set up as South only and it became kind of a, I don't want to say a last minute thing, but certainly we were down the road quite a bit before the North got added to this because of some concerns um, from some of their member schools. So Donnie, if you would scroll up just a little bit on that, please. Hey, we're real, real quick. Into, real yeah, Ray, go ahead. Part. Man, I want you to know, I love the competitive balance part. It's just, I mean, it's been great, but it's just the reality is just killing us. Well, um, and, and I get it. I, I appreciate everything you guys have done. Appreciate all the work that we've all put on it. But man, this new world is just killing it up here, unfortunately. So thank, yeah, and, and thank you, Ray. And we, we understand that as well. And obviously, it's just the geography of Nevada. When you look at the top of the state, it's really wide. And the bottom half of the state is very compact. Uh, anybody else on the committee uh, that would like to address what we just talked about with the possibility of those 3A enrollment-based schools maybe moving or being eligible for movement to 4A? Okay. Uh, Donnie, if you would just scroll back up the bottom half of that last page, we would need to talk about where that number sits for if we were to do enrollment-based schools in the 3A what's going to be that magic number? Because as Mr. Parks had mentioned, Fernley and Elko may have numbers that are above that. As Mr. Wilson talked about Pahrump being a possibility of being over that number. I think Mr. Parks, correct me if I'm wrong, that magic number for the North between 3A and 4A for quite some time has been Elko plus one, more or less. Yeah, for the same reason that's happening right now. You know, Elko's so far out there. So back in the day, all the Reno schools had to travel out there to Elko, every one of them, when we were in the, I guess it was 3A or 4A. And Jesus just got impossible for, you can imagine all three levels of every sport driving to Elko, which is for them would be almost 300 miles every single contest. So it's always just been, you know, they're going to bump that number up so they didn't have to go out to Elko. Thank you, Mr. Parks. And where this becomes an issue too, when we look at those, where to set that number is when we look at our charter schools that are coming in in the 3A South, their enrollment is doubled based on our regulations. Where they would fall in this too, depending on then what we do with the possibility of those enrollment-based 3A schools being eligible to move to 4A may lock us in. 3A wise to a certain number. So that's why I said these two items are, are a little bit tied together too, as the committee looks at them. So that may be something to go back and take a look at of if we're going to set that number, where do we set it? And do we then consider that first half of the discussion of the 3A schools that are enrollment based, possibly moving up with the rubric? Um, anyone else's thoughts on this that hasn't had a chance to express theirs yet or our members of the committee who have want to jump back in. And Mr. Nelson, if you would like to jump back in on that also. No, thank you, Mr. Davis. And that was a great discussion. Pardon me there. Uh, Ron Stallworth, our chair, is back in the meeting. As you saw, I was on the phone there trying to get, guide him in. So uh, we'll move on. And again, we'll get those realignment uh, 
uh, I'm sorry, enrollment, enrollment numbers uh, in due time for our meeting. So we have them for you uh, available to work with yet. So, all right, Mr. Davis, back to you. Let's go on to another one. All right, now here we go into the discussion about COVID and what it's done to us and smoke and what it's done to us and all that good stuff. I'm gonna figure out what really constitutes a counting season for a team. Um, we've had teams, and especially if you look back at last year, and this is another reason why our staff thinks maybe counting last year isn't such a good idea. We had teams that had half their season wiped out because they had to sit for 10 days and then their opponent had to sit. So they only had four games as a regular season. Now in football, we've had teams where four games is their league season and that's all they play. So we need to maybe think about when a team has games taken away for whatever reason, be it smoke, be it COVID, whatever, what really does constitute the season? If they only got to play the best teams in their league or the lesser teams in their league, is that fair to count that? Again, don't want to lead you in any way, shape, or form on this. Don't want to make it any more convoluted for people than it already is, but it's something to consider. If a team were to lose a couple of weeks of its season, maybe twice even during the season, is it fair to measure them? And how do we do that? Mr. Nelson, anything you want to add on that one? I'll tell you what, uh, Mr. Anderson, I know you are absorbing all this as quickly as possible, understanding, wow, this, this committee has got a lot to do. Um, being the most affected committee member here with all that's transpired in through the first four weeks of this season, what, what are some of your thoughts and what do we look at long term with regards to counting the season? Um, well, I, I think we're going to be, I mean, it's all going to come down to what we count for last year because obviously down south um, they couldn't do a, a fall or a winter season. We couldn't do a winter season up here as well. Um, right now we're in the process of making up, trying to make up everything smoke wise that we're able to do. And I, I don't know how much uh, COVID is going to hurt us. We haven't had any forfeits due to COVID. Um, we just had some rescheduling, but I, I mean, if, if it gets, worse than it is now obviously we'll go into that forfeit mode um it, it's it, it's interesting I, I i feel like we definitely are going to have to look at the last the big picture the last four years tie in the previous two years because this last year i just don't think we're going to get a lot of realistic um data from it because it was so short so quick volleyball it was a uh, even though we played a fall season, there was a lot of teams that only played four or five times, Spanish Springs being one of those teams um, through the fall. So um, just just some thoughts, I guess. Um, I think we can count it, um, but I don't know how much weight we would put on to it. Thank you. I'm going to jump back in, Mr. Nelson, if that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Anderson, for those comments. I will tell the group right now that if we look at two seasons, again, that would be this year and next, if we were to do something like that. Again, not trying to lead you towards it, just saying that's what we would do. But I, I will say that this item itself, when I look at it, when I was going through this and typing this up, this is me being paranoid that we're going to have a lot of teams shut down. May not happen. We may be fine and be able to play 80, 90, or in some teams' cases, 100% of the schedule. This one's a just-in-case-it-happens simply because we've seen a lot of just-in-case-it-happens come up. Mr. Parks, oh, I think you want to jump in? Yeah, so in the 3A North already, so we've had cancellations of all, all South Lake Tahoe athletics for until, I guess, today, Donnie. They're gonna, they can come back today, or I haven't heard. Yeah, again, back in back in school on Thursday, but now they got to oh, prepare uh, practice wise to be able to back in the competition. Yeah. So we had that. Then we had uh, the first two weeks of the schedule got all canceled, and for us, um, the league one gets rolling about the second week. So, so we've already had that. Um, so we're going to have a meeting on Wednesday to redo all of our plans for our regional tournaments this year because the uh, South Tala thing is guaranteed. They've already canceled, and again, I hate to keep whining, but they they have no way they can't. They tell me they can't come and replay any of those games. So in football, obviously, they can't do that anyway. But they can't come on a weekday, and every weekend's booked now. So South Tall is definitely out. Um, if we kept what we were doing right now, so we're going to have to redo them all. And, and Bart Davis, I, I, 
if I don't mind jump, jumping over here, I want to just talk about to our 1A and 2A people and see what really, and you know, because you've been keeping a master schedule for our association, but I'm curious to hear from the 1A, 2A people about what they're, what they're seeing effect-wise at, at this time of the year. I, I think it's minimal, but I, but I really want to ask them to be sure. So maybe Mike Brooks, you're there, then Bill Darrell. What, what, what's going on with you guys? Are we, are we doing okay in our two-way? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, just one sec. If you want to go first, Bill. Okay. So, so ask a question again, Nani, because I was, I yeah. mean, I don't see us having a problem. Go ahead and ask us a okay. question again, please. That, that's all it was, Bill. Do you, do you see yourself having a problem fulfilling things at this point in time? Fulfilling games? This year. Fulfilling games? This year, yes. So far, we're doing okay. I mean, we've lost okay. some. We personally lost some non-league games early. Had to shut down football, but we're planning on playing Laughlin this Friday night, and hopefully those things keep continuing. I, I think it's it's going okay with us. I mean, you know, testing is a nightmare like it is for everybody, but, yeah, I think we're okay. Okay. Um, Mike Brooks, I can come back to you in a second. Uh, Mike, Mike Strong, David Vick, how about how our 1A? We, we doing okay? Yeah, we're uh, – we're seeing cancellations, and the key is going to be trying to make those those games up a little bit. What Ray's talking about when, you know, the, the mileage is crazy um, to make it happen. Um, been some non-league shutdowns. We'll see once the league gets up. But volleyball league games, we've had some cancellations already. Went around Mountain out of school for a couple of weeks. We're hoping to get them back in and get going again. And so we just, uh, I guess for us, is trying to figure out when does it become a forfeit. Um or when is it non-contest contested if we can't get it made up? And what does it mean for the tournament at the end? But, yeah, it's definitely had a, had an impact. It hasn't killed us off yet. Um, we're hoping to get better. But, you know, as as Bill said, every week of testing, you know, just kind of hold your breath and see what happens. David, Vic, and then I'll turn it back over to Bart Davis. David? Yeah, we've had some non-league cancellations. I mean, we just had some at Smith. Um, but we haven't started our league yet, and the hope is that we don't have issues with that. But you, you're not going to know until we get through it. And, again, this is 1A and 2A, obviously not in the rubric system, but I want everybody to be able to hear that what, what is happening there, just, just so we're all aware of it. Uh, uh, Bart, we can turn it back to, uh, to Mike Greg Brooks if he's there for a comment. If not, again, I'll turn it back to you, Bart. Yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, we've, we've had not too many cancellations, but – um, and most schools in ours, uh, the mileage isn't a big deal either. But, for instance, uh, Persian County, we weren't able to play White Pine Wendover in soccer this past weekend. So we don't know how we're going to make that up, you know what I mean? But Because that's not something you can do on a Wednesday. So I don't know. We'll just figure it out as we go, I guess, and see if we can squeeze it in somewhere else. But you never know who else is going to have to cancel throughout the year when you could make it up. So I guess you never say it's dead. But, yeah, it's pretty tough to do. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. And I will say with this with this little um, sub item, I guess we'll call it here on what constitutes a season. We can keep in mind, too, that during the last cycle, we had some teams that did not fulfill all four years. They came in partway through the cycle and we just kind of averaged them out to see where they'd be, put them where the committee thought it was best. Bishop Gorman flag football was one that had one year of data in a four year cycle. Slam wrestling didn't have a full four years. We placed them where the committee thought it was best based on the numbers we had. So we can, I don't want to say finagle it. That's not what I'm talking about here, but we can certainly look at, at non-completed seasons and maybe go with just the completed seasons for a team. If we get to that point, I'm hoping we don't, again, this, this sub item is all about paranoia from the guy putting this together to make sure that we don't get into a bad situation. Okay, this next item is going to look really confusing, and I'm not going to spend very much time on it. Just keep in mind that we have a weighted factor that we used last year when a 5A team, or in last year's case, two years ago's case, a 4A team played a 3A team. It's something we're going to need to determine north, no changes. They stay fine on this if we do indeed go with the rubric. But in the south now, we're going to have 5A playing 4A and 3A and 4A playing 3A. And that's something that I may look to this committee for some people who aren't completely repulsed by math, like, like I am, to maybe kind of come together and uh, just come up with some ideas. I don't want to spend very much time on this because there's a lot there. It's terribly confusing, and we don't need to confuse people today. So 
just keep in mind on that, that, that we're going to kind of look towards trying to come up with some sort of factor on that. Okay. Last two items. Northern tennis, and this may depend on what we do in the north for to begin with. But we want to keep in mind here that the last go around, we put northern tennis as we did southern tennis. We combined the two teams, boys and girls, into one score, which was a differentiation from the average. We did that in the south because most of the southern tennis teams, boys and girls, have one coach. In the north, that's not the case. Entirely separate, play separate sites at the same time. So would the committee want to, and this may be, again, if depending on what road we go down in the north, talk to our northern people and see if they'd like to split tennis up and make that two separate sports where we place teams separately in that. We can certainly do that. Might cause a little bit of a, of a hiccup scheduling wise, which is what we're hearing a lot about today that we don't necessarily want to do. But it's something we could do to separate those two sports in the north. I don't think we'd want to touch that in the south, but I don't want to tell you not to either. That may be something the South wants to do because we do have some programs where the boys team may not be as good as the girls team or vice versa, where they really should be in separate classes. So something to consider there with Northern tennis. Thoughts on that from the group? Yeah, I have a question. Has there ever been some, some talk about the uh, boys and girls golf separating themselves like they do that in golf? Will we ever consider doing that in tennis? and separate the boys and girls seasons? Uh, one in the fall and one in the spring you're talking about? Mr. Yes. Stalwart? Mr. Nelson? Yeah, yeah. Uh, board President Stallworth, that, that, that is a, uh, a huge topic. And if that's something we want to go down the road, and I don't know, so that would come out of the realignment committee. Uh, I think that's going to be something that would come out of a, a district or a school presentation to get a survey on. So uh, I, I'm not going to give you the, the positives and the negatives. There are many on both sides in separating seasons and the why, whys we have the seasons the way they are. So I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone, Rollins. If you, you and I okay. want to speak about that, how, how you would bring that up in front of the membership and go through a process to address that, we, certainly we can do that. Good. Uh, I'm, Art Anderson, this, this is one, again, for you. And, and I know you've got your 5A Northern Region meeting coming up here on Monday the 20th. I don't think this is something you put on Bob Levitt's uh, agenda just yet. I think this would be for your October meeting. And then I would be here at that meeting. So I won't be there as you, as you know, on the 20th. And then for, uh, for Ron and, and Kevin at some point too, again, just another subtopic as, as principals talk about how the rubric is structured and how sports are separated is consider, consider tennis in the South doing the same thing that we, we brought up here on the agenda for the North. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. And, Bart, you can ask any questions or comments and we'll move to the last one. Well, let's look, if we could get Mr. Anderson's thoughts on that too, yeah. because he's, he's at, a, at a school where this happens, where they have separate teams who play at the same time at different sites. Mr. Anderson, is that something that, that the North, was, has there been any talk about the, in that about that in the North? Why didn't we split them, for instance? Um, no, I, I, I think what happened was we, we realized that the, the few, the couple schools that might needed to have been split, we just decided to keep them together based on the, on the fact that um, I don't know. It was just, I, I guess, easier. Maybe a coach um, coached both teams, although that doesn't because they, they play at separate sites, but he um, and they play on the same day. So I don't know necessarily how that would have uh, affected it. Um, I, I think it is something that we could if. if if it's deemed that like once like Spanish Springs needs to go to the three A or something in tennis, then I I think that's a possibility for the future. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, the the reason that that we bring this up today is if we're going to go competitive balance across the board, and we have the opportunity to do that with these other sports that we group together for whatever reason, that we have that opportunity to also maybe ungroup them and do it sport by sport. As Mr. Anderson said, I don't know that this necessarily affects a great number of schools and that's all these little things that we're bringing to you again not going to upset the apple cart if we do them or don't do them can i chime in on that right now I please please, there. please do mr parks all right so we have four 5a boys soccer teams douglas mcqueen reno and minogue none of that's going well so so I know you guys are in the big city, but 
try and picture this for a minute. So they have a, so that these teams are dropping down to a boys soccer team. So I literally had four different schools. We have a traditional schedule. We've ran forever in the 3A North. I have four different 5A schools all wanting to change the schedule for when someone comes there. I mean, I got senior day. I got vacation day. I got this. I got that. Literally all of them hit me with all that. And I'm trying to explain that when a school comes five hours, if you guys don't communicate and you mess that up, that you cannot redo that schedule. You guys follow me? Spring Creek comes all the way to Douglas. You're talking maybe six hours of travel. If they screw that up because they change all their schedules and the wrong team shows up at the wrong time, there's no way to make that up. So, I mean, it's just, it's just illogical what we're doing, okay, to send four – Five A schools out to play a boys soccer game makes zero sense. And you guys can talk competitive balance and all that you want, but financially, it's impossible. It's impossible now with the officials to make this happen. And I just don't see that getting any better. So I would rather them have the ability to move up and stay in the five A in soccer, you know, if they want to, or, or, or build a four A or something. But sending them out to us and then they don't show, and vice versa, we don't show to them. I'm not, don't say it's just them. It's us too. Um, it's just not working. It's not feasible. And, and unfortunately it's not going to get better. Maybe next year, Hey, all of a sudden we, we find a thousand bus drivers and we get all kinds of money and it works, but boy, it's not going to work this year. Thank you. And I, if I can just real quick go along with what Ray said. Yeah. This year it's a mess in soccer, simply in the five, eight, it's starting to hit the five, eight, a little bit as we are being asked to reschedule things on a regular basis, um, there's just not enough officials for soccer. And so the way we've set it up, we are creating a big problem in both the 3A and the 5A. And so, um, yeah, just to go along with what Ray's saying. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was done. Yeah, thanks, Bart. Thank you. Uh, and again, you know, these are all things we need to consider, certainly. And the North and... and we, we've, I've been in this state 14 years. A lot of you've been around a heck of a lot longer than I have. And the North and the South don't always understand each other's issues. And we, we, that's something that this group, I, I think we did a much better job this last time around in understanding that. And I, I know we still need to do some things differently in different places and that's okay. We can, we, we just need to see what's going to work best for everybody, but most importantly, best for our student athletes as well. So um, with that, we'll move on. Unless there's any anybody else who wants to chime in on the tennis portion of this, um, we'll move on to that last item about golf. Well, I, I, Bart, I would like to to, to add a, a bit to this. Yeah. You know, as a realignment committee and and uh, and working on this now, this is my third committee that I've been on um, regarding realignment. One of the things that comes up and and what's happening is is we got to take the information that Ray and the commission of the 3A is going through this year with regards to the scheduling, with regards to the rotation of the current Northern 5A, 4A schools coming in and going out per sport, girls sport, boys sport. I mean, it's creating major, major issues, especially with those schools in, in Washoe County that has a, a 5A boys team and a 3A girls team. And those issues are dramatic when, when they're trying to, um, what, what Ray's biggest difficult task is doing is trying to teach a 5A athletic program, 5A athletic director and a 5A group of athletes on a particular sport and parents that the 3A schedule is nothing like the 5A schedule. So you don't play on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and those kinds of things, and most of the time in the in the three A, and so it it really became a culture shock for a lot of our five A schools that are participating in three A sports now, be it soccer uh, or whatever, football or whatever, um, to get used to that schedule on top of a pandemic, lack, lack of transportation, lack of drivers, all of those things. So those are things that we're gonna have to consider when we move forward through this. And, and, and I really think that 
Um, if you think we got to get out of the box a little bit in what we're doing, we're probably going to have to get out of that box even more as we move forward because this thing is not, it's not going to straighten itself out. No, and thank you, Mr. Stallworth. And I, I think the one thing, and thank you, Mr. Parks and Mr. Anderson on this too. One thing we we as a committee can do, and obviously Mr. Stallworth is the, the president of the board, you and the, the board of control can do, we're not locked into anything that's being displayed here today. We can come up with anything we can come up with that's going to work best for everybody. It doesn't have to be the same in the North as in the South, as we've talked about, but we do need to consider everybody's concerns as well. And they're all valid concerns. And it, we've made, we've had this discussion in the office where we felt we were better prepared this year for a pandemic. We maybe weren't as prepared for the pandemic on top of the spoke, on top of the officials, on top of the transportation. It, it's, it's an avalanche that's come at everybody. We certainly understand that. And I, I, I don't, we don't want to tell anybody what they have to do. This is something that this group, what we come up with over the course of these next several meetings, it's going to have to work for people in certain areas. Mr. Parks, sure. go ahead. Well, I appreciate what Rollins saying there. And I don't want to screw up anything that's going well in the South. I mean, it's going well yeah. down there. Let's keep, we just got to figure out when it rolls time around for our state tournaments, how we make all that work. Right. Because if it's working in the South, great because it's you know it is a great plan it just doesn't work up here unfortunately and and you know i feel like nostradamus here but um there's just so many variables that i you know i brought up before and it's and it's certainly we didn't have covid then but my god now it's it is literally impossible to make this happen right now just like we talked about making up a game i've offered to let everybody meet in winnemucca because we're the middle of the road, but it's still, geez, from Reno, it's 170 miles. From Tahoe, it's 220 miles just to get to Winnemuck. So I get it. That still isn't, you know, an answer. But anyway, I'll, I'll quit my whining, but that's reality here. So thank you. And Bart Davis, I'm going to, I'm just going to throw this question out there and then we'll move on to our last item. And again, I don't, this is not the solicit responses. Have all of you think about what would be the minimum number of teams that should be involved in a league in order to fill schedules and still let teams get enough games that are non-league to help fill schedules? And obviously, this is more of a northern-based question with a mm -hmm. 5A, possibly a 4A north, a 3A north. You know, we know where we're headed with 2A and 1A in the north. And again, I don't believe this is that much of a factor right now in the south. And I could be wrong. But think about that. What, what would – what would be a minimum number of teams that would be needed to make a viable league? And the reason I say that is because remember how this all started. Some of you remember, we got the rubric going because at one point in the three a South, we were to three teams. That was it. It was Boulder city and Wapa Valley and Virgin Valley because Crump Valley at the time had even moved to the four a. So that's our history. That's how this all started. It was a minimum number of teams needed for fill schedule. So anyway, I'm going to get off of that part. I'm going to turn it back over to you. But keep well, Mr. Mr. That question will come Mr. up. Mr. Anderson, quick, along, along with what Donnie's saying and just something for Ray to think about as well. I mean, there's 21 Northern 3A, 4A, 5A schools. And if we divided them into seven and had a ratio of one to seven, um, and obviously that could be adjusted to, to some, I, I, I think most of our schools would be happy with that ratio. I just don't know if that ratio is too small. And, and, and thank you, Mr. Anderson. I'll propose something else. You guys know I'm a math guy. That, 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 that's why we have all these numbers in this data. Whatever we want to come up with, if we need to measure it in any way this first time around to set some teams up, we will. If we don't, we won't. Whatever this group wants to do. And the, the triple sevens are fine. If it's eight, seven, and six, whatever's going to help these kids be able to participate and not be in situations where they're being mercy ruled and they don't come out. Yeah. We'll, well, well, whatever we need to yeah. do, we'll do, Mr. Parks. Well, I'm a math guy, too, all the way through calculus is what I taught. So I understand there you go. 21 divided by three. Trust me. Um, we're to the point now where we we take our, our six east and find games that we knew people would come to. I mean, it's that frustrating right now. And, again, it's nobody's fault. I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. But uh, – 
the the problem for me is going to be South Lake Tahoe and Tahoe Truckee. Although I would assume Truckee would love to just come down the hill and play in Reno. And I would assume South Tahoe would love to have that too. So, uh, I mean, I, that's where we're at these six, but again, I know Vegas got to be tired of me, but Lyon County has two of our schools in it and they're so much closer to Reno than they are to all of us. They don't want to go to Reno, but I'm not saying their superintendent might not tell them, I don't care what you want. You're going to Reno, you know, in the future. Thank you, Mr. Parks. Go ahead, Mr. Stallworth. Ray, do you think that that would happen? Um, you know what I what has come to mind here is is the fact that um, you know we tried to send a um, an alignment schedule that was a circle mm -hmm. and put it into a square hole. Sure. And and we're finding out that man, you can hammer that circle as much as you want that golf ball, but you're not going to get it in that little square hole no matter how how much you pound it. Yeah. And, and I think uh, one of the things that realignment we have to consider as we move forward through this is we have to find an easier way. We've, we've, we've always done everything the hardest, the hardest yeah. way possible. Yeah. That's what we've done. And we tried to, to do something that tried to appease to every single person. And yeah. I think one of the things that we should learn from this, and I know I have, is is number one is we're not going to be able to appease everyone. Yes, but if we could tell everyone involved, like Ray just mentioned, if we can give those schools a voice and say, what's your solution? What do you think of? And give them some other options. My guess is, is that the 3A uh, situation in the, in the uh, North right now would probably solve itself if just you guys just let us solve it. And, and, and just come up with some possible solutions because I'm like with Ray now, what's going on in the South now is working if they can ever play. But what it, what's going on in the South right now with the 5A, the 4A, the 3A, and what they got going down there it, it is working for them. And, and my hats are off to those guys and the best of luck. And they got some phenomenal people down there busting the button doing that. But I tell you what, it is not working up here. And it's, it's actually getting worse. And so um, it might look a little bit different, but I really think that the, the solution and the answer to this, I think is when, when, we're, when it's all said and done, it's going to be an easy one. I, I really think so. I think it's, it's going to be like, oh, is this all we needed to do? And, if, and, and, and the reality is if we do that, there might even – not even be a need to, to, to have that whole competitive balance aspect and the formula and all of that stuff, because it's our situation here is not really competitive balance as it is location and, 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 and distance between schools is, is the biggest issue more than anything else. Yep. Sorry, Davis. Rollins, I think that's the perfect place to end on it so we don't get too far down the road of looking at uh, recommendations or motions. Let, let's halt it right there and be very careful. This is what the workshop is. Uh, Bart, let me turn over to the last item, and then we'll, I know we're at 78 minutes here, and I know it, which, which is fine. We all understand. We're almost there. So, Bart, Bart how, much, how much time do we pay on the uh, nine holes? Because this is a little bit of an interesting issue, the nine hole golf. Go ahead. It, it is, but I'm going to really simplify this for the committee. Uh, we do our scoring for golf on an 18 hole average for league matches. We're going to be in situations where we're not going to be able to, allow, to be playing 18 hole matches because of course availability. Uh, we thought we were going to be in that situation this year. We're not right now, at least. So what we're gonna maybe talk about in, in that November meeting, one thing I'd like you to think about now is maybe we change that golf to be an average per nine holes, just in the event that we have nine hole matches. We will need to talk a little bit about the back end of things because the South has cuts after nine holes and what to do about those kids. And we have situations where teams don't have the requisite four players to score. So this again, as they're talking about in the North, may not be a North issue at all, certainly a south issue at this point something to think about with the scoring of the golf is do we just change that to a nine hole average thank thank you bart again more things for all of us to think about and right. get into our meetings and relate to them so and, and mr nelson if i could just wrap this up real quick yep. by saying again if we touch none of this 
it's not going to break the rubric as we have it in the South. The North, we were well along before we ever had to bring the rubric in and there were some issues there that that's the reason we brought it in. We weren't sure at the time it was the right thing to do. And from what Mr. Stallworth, Mr. Anderson and Mr. Parks have said, maybe it's not, maybe some of this has been in vain, but for the South, these are some things that just to think about, take back to the people you represent, talk about it with them, come ready to go in November. Thank you, Bart. All right, I'm going to just uh, wrap up and summarize what's in the packet for you on pages 14 through 20. Those are the policies. Obviously at some point, this is what we're gonna address in November. These are in essence, a summary of what we did last time, almost cut and paste to a large degree uh, from that. So, so again, you can spend some time and see there, all the things we have talked about today are going to influence what our new policies are. Even though I've got fall 23 through spring 25 process on there, that doesn't mean these are set in stone. This is just a reflection of last year. And now we'll have to go through all these different aspects and start amending things. And then I'm gonna keep on scrolling there without trying to make you dizzy, but uh, going to pages 21 through 26, those are the procedures, right? So we've got the timeline and we've got the policies and we've got the procedures. Obviously the last, last two, the policies and procedures respectfully be in the real governance of how we're gonna operate this realignment process. So there are the procedures. For those again, um, no need to take time to review them because that's what we're gonna have to do coming up at our next meeting. And I will get to, well, that's actually gonna take us to the end of this here. So I one. Two more items to go. One of them was committee member comments and for the good of the order. This was an open ended question. I was almost going to ask each one of you individually if and not again, not to lead us towards a recommendation or anything, but almost just a, a brief thought of where you think your particular league needed to go or wanted to go with this realignment process. Maybe that's a comment of we like it the way it is. No change. Or as we've heard today from various people, maybe we do need some change. Again, not trying to get too specific in that. Um, so let, let's, let's keep it to, uh, to, to comments, unless you feel like you need more dialogue. Let's go one at a time. I'll start with, uh, we'll just go right in the same order of our voting members here. Uh, David Vick, anything in particular for the 1A North that you see as a, as a goal or objective in this realignment process ahead? Well, I think travel is a big issue for same as in the 3A, and that's something that we got to talk about and try to balance out somehow. Okay, thank you, David. Mike Strong? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think for us, one thing that the committee's allowed us to do is work together, and come to a solution for our schools. And, and that has been very helpful. And I think that's something that we're hearing from the North a little bit. We're hearing, you know, let us fix it. We'll bring it to you. And um, then, then we can we can work from there. And so we appreciate that. You talked a little bit ago about the rubric for us. And the, the one big issue is there's nowhere for our bottom to go, right? So the, the idea of the rubric is for the bottom to go somewhere. Well, the 1A, there's nowhere for that bottom to go. And, and so we have to make sure we do a really good job of still trying to protect those schools the best, that, the best that we can. And so it doesn't do us any good to pull somebody and um, just get those schools hammered more than, more than they might be. But, but I, I think for us, we're able to work together. We'll come up with a solution of what we need to do to help in, in those situations that we have. And uh, then we can bring it back to you. Thank, thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Good comments there. Mike Brooks. Mike, are you still on there? I know you were you were running around the building there a little bit. All right. Bill Darrow. No, you know, the issue I see for the 2A South in the future is just is just surviving because of school. You know, if we lose Lincoln County in the future and, and maybe Meadows eventually and, and let me go up, we need to just I think travel is going to get worse for us. It'll be like it used to be with Wendover coming in. And, and, and I don't know. I, I think that's the only issue we have is just trying to survive as a two way Southern league, but we'll keep working on it. Yeah, I agree. Bill Darrell, you're, you're boy, you hit that right on uh, Ray parks. <laughs> oh, you've heard enough of me. Um, you know what we got to do. So I agree with Rollins. We can fix all this because we all work together. Well, I think we work great with the South. We just got to find time to get it all figured out. Sounds good. Jay Dell. I think the biggest question for me that I brought out of this is the, the comment back on the possibility of uh, 3A enrollment based schools being eligible to move to 4A and what would that would do to the integrity of our league? I mean, if, if you bump two or three of us up out of the league um, into 4A for something, you know, how's that going to affect or what, what does that make the 3A league look like? And, um, 
you know, competitively send schools northward to to compete. So that'll be the one interesting to me with the with the three south to talk to them about. Good, good, good comments there. Appreciate it, Jadil. Uh, Ron, welcome, welcome to the committee, and you've heard a whole lot today uh, as well. But uh, just got some initial thoughts from you. Thank you, Donnie. Uh, the, the rubric is well thought out uh, with the limited information that we have so far. Uh, last year was unfortunate, um, not just in sports, but in just about every aspect of life. I say we stay the course, uh, collect pertinent and valid data or, uh, this year and next, uh, and use that valid data to inform our decisions in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Kevin? No, I, yeah, I agree with Ron again, but the, the 5A, the, you know, the division has been a success in what we've seen on the short amount of data we have. I think this committee, just the importance of this for Ron and I to bring back some of the issues. I think sometimes our 4A and 5A don't understand the complexities that are really driving some of those issues at 3A that then affect 4A. So, so this is good information for us to bring back to kind of our, our schools to understand. Um, and so, yeah, but I think this it is working in the south and we need to we need to help the guys up, up north good yeah thank you kevin again right wrong or indifferent as i like to say uh the clark county school district principals certainly had a had a big hand in helping to structure this the last time and so having having that involvement with you two is is paramount for this uh, committee to be successful and uh Artie anderson and, and agreed everybody's heard enough from me today as well but working with ray and rollins just to tweak um and, and maybe find a way to create a 4A in the north um, that that might help some of the situations that we are facing right now. Okay. And a few people we haven't heard from here, Brett Walter, private school side, you've had a lot to hear about now and you're obviously your, your group of schools and intermixed all the way through, right? 1A to 5A, but uh, just some thoughts from you. Yeah, I think yeah, I would agree with everybody else. I mean, it's a unique state. We've seen a lot, we got private schools in, in all different leagues and, and we just have to work with everybody to try to make it work effectively. And uh, I think uh, the guys in their regions know what's gonna work. And so, you know, we have to listen to what they have to say and, and, and just make it work, even if that means there's some differences around the state. Very hey, good. Brett, would you be willing to, to meet us like in Tonopah, we'll play you guys? <laughs> yeah, right, sounds good. <laughs> I've been there before. There you go. <laughs> yes, you have. Uh, Mike Cofer, did you get the chance to jump on with us? I don't, I don't believe so. Didn't see him. Okay. Uh, Tim Jackson, are you, um, sorry, I, I didn't see you on the screen here. Have you bounced back in the meeting? Yeah, no problem, Donnie. I don't know if you can any comment at this time. I haven't been in long enough. Okay. Fair enough. And uh, anything from staff wise, Bart Davis, any concluding thought from you? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. We do have some newer committee members on here who may be haven't quite studied everything or have some questions that they don't want to ask the group in terms of how we apply this to certain sports, especially in the South. And if they do feel free to reach out to us, if you see us at a game or just want to shoot us an email or give us a call to get a little deeper explanation, we can certainly do that at any time. Um, we want to make whatever we do, whether it's rubric or lack thereof for certain areas of the state work for the student athletes. The best. And the biggest thing to, to us is participation. We want to get those participation numbers up, and that's that's however it takes, wherever you are. That's what we want to do. Thank you, Bart. And in the essence of time, you see our public comment on the screen. I, I don't believe in a workshop. Paul Anderson, correct me if I'm wrong. Can we we can ask Lori for public comment without reading the paragraph? Be in a workshop. Is that correct? Yeah, you don't have to read the whole thing. Just Thank indicate you. the public <laughs> comment and see if we have any. Thank you, Lori. Lots. Any uh, any public comment to your nope. office? No, okay. none at this time. Yep, nothing to my email, nothing on my text uh, from, from the basis meeting from PublicWise. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but it's uh, interesting and entertaining on, on our agenda. So we'll do a good job. Yep. That was adjourned, and we'll look forward to Tuesday, um, November 30th. We'll get this after it, get after it, 9 o'clock a.m. Thank you, everybody, for your time today. Really Thank you, Donnie. Thanks, yeah. guys.